There's more to a Thanksgiving meal than just turkey, so let's round up the top 10 worst Thanksgiving dinner dishes. Cranberry sauce. The cranberry is such an unassuming fruit. The rich color and delicate size and structure of the fruit lulls you into a false sense of sweet decadence. The reality is far less appealing. The cranberry is tough, chewy, and overall pretty brutal on the taste buds. The cranberries always seemed like an odd addition to the holiday table. The fruit is incredibly sour even after adding buckets of sugar. The taste always completely overtakes just about everything it touches, making it a bizarre option to have as a side dish to the more subtle flavor of a perfectly basted and baked turkey. And forget about using it in a dessert. However, year after year, it continues to make an appearance on dining tables far and wide. But what is it? And what makes the weird red relish so unpleasant? The best answer lies within the bucket of sugar idea that was touched on earlier. In fact, the cranberry sauce that you buy doesn't have any actual sugar per se, but rather it is cooked with high fructose corn syrup. The concoction is then broiled and boiled into the notorious red goop, then cooled and canned. It comes in two popular types, the jellied for more of a solid goop flavor, and the whole fruit slash berry variety, if chewing pieces of the fruit in the jelly is something that you prefer. Either way, cranberry sauce continues to appear on the table, regardless of how much people dislike it. Turnip this Thanksgiving side takes us on a journey into the blander end of the side dish spectrum. Turnip is a root vegetable that comes in two main colors, purple and white. It grows in cold climates with lots of sunlight. Turnips have been used in place of the greasy, salty potato chip appearing on shelves in the last decade or so as an alternative chip if you're feeling like something with a more earthy taste. They have more fiber, if you care about that kind of thing, but for the purposes of this list, the turnip is not being put on a pedestal for its trendy new appearance on store shelves. This kind of turnip is the kind that is mashed and smashed, is served with little to no seasoning, and tends to make a sickly sound when a heaping spoon of it hits the plate. It tends to be the dull white version, with perhaps a sprinkle of cheese or an onion to jazz it up. Jazzing up a turnip seems to be an uphill battle, as many people still associate the turnip with tasting like dirt. Ouch. Steamed or boiled, baked or grilled, try as it might, the turnip continues to be one of the worst additions to the Thanksgiving dinner spread. Creamed Corn there are lots of corn advocates out there, but we're not talking about the fan favorite corn on the cob. We're talking about creamed corn, also known as cream-style sweet corn, or simply soup corn. The name really says it all. Creamed corn is a soup-like milky mess that usually comes in a can for ease of use. Interestingly, when made from scratch, it can get surprisingly complex. The corn needs to be husked and shucked before all the individual kernels are sliced off and removed from the cob. The kernels themselves are then painstakingly sliced halfway through using a sharp knife. This step is said to release the corn juice from the kernels, which is what makes up the creamed portion of the dish. You heard that right. The original creamed corn contained absolutely no cream or milk or dairy byproducts at all. The corn juice was either repurposed because it looked a bit milky, or the milk from the mushy white of the cob was saved, stored, and used as a base. Today, the canned version that is most often seen on Thanksgiving tables contains tapioca starch as its thickening agent. And nothing says Thanksgiving like tapioca starch. Ambrosia Salad a lesser-known Thanksgiving meal add-on is the ambrosia salad, and while it is used as a lighter dessert option to the popular pumpkin pie, there are still loads of people who feast on the stuff during the dinner portion of the meal as well. The salad's composition is interesting and unexpected. Think marshmallow fluff meets diced-up jello. It contains a medley of fruits such as oranges, apples, cherries, and peaches that are then slathered with heavy cream, tossed, chilled, and 
conserved. The ambrosia part of the equation comes from ancient Greek mythology, where all the gods and various other rich people would eat the dish because it was said to promote immortality. Even after the Greek god idea, there was another similar school of thought. This one stated that the salad separated the rich from the poor in the late 19th century, as it contained ingredients that most people couldn't afford. The dish crept up through the ranks and onto the holiday table in recent years. Sure, it has a bit of a cult-like following, but many people are not sold. Reviews of the dish often include words like gross and disgusting, along with phrases like tastes like wet cheese. So for many, there's just one question surrounding this sickly sweet and oddly out of place dish. Why? Hard Veggie Platter there's no doubting the importance of rounding out a meal with the appropriate number of greens, especially when balancing out a heavy Thanksgiving meal. However, nothing seems to spell dread as guests start to gather at the dinner table like a tray of rock-hard, tasteless raw veggies. Perhaps because on a day of Thanksgiving indulgence, gnawing through a carrot or a giant celery stalk just doesn't seem to go with the savory theme of the day. In fact, more than 36% of Americans say they offer and don't bother to add veggies to any of their meals, ever. So when Thanksgiving rolls around, the number of people lining up to eat raw veggies is pretty low. Keeping with the topic, by far the most unpopular way a raw vegetable can show up during a holiday meal is in the big, bulky plastic tray. You know the one. The one with the weak selection of carrots, broccoli, and celery. And who can forget that teeny, tiny ranch dressing in the center? While it may be an easy choice if you're asked to bring something last minute, don't. The prepackaged raw vegetable tray really tanks. Time and again, the tray has dinner guests turning up their noses. Between the boring selection and predictable packaging, it's no wonder people find themselves skipping over the veggies in favor of just about everything else. The good news? There always seems to be lots left over. Giblet Gravy while turkey is one of the more widely enjoyed meals from the poultry family, it can be argued that without the correct accompaniments, it can be a little bit dry and dull. But when it comes to jazzing it up, gravy is one of the more popular condiments. Standard gravy is a simple concept. Splash the bird juice in with some flour, maybe some salt and pepper, and there you go. But as with anything in the culinary world, it just wouldn't be right if someone didn't want to change the formula into something that no one really wanted. Enter giblet gravy. Giblets are categorized as the neck, gizzard, heart, and liver of a turkey. They usually are removed and then held together with netting before being placed with the bird again. To put it bluntly, they're often stuffed where the sun doesn't shine. Remove the giblets from the bird, add some seasoning and the faithful scoop of flour, and you have something that is definitely different from the standard gravy. You wouldn't, for example, want to slather giblet gravy on french fries. There isn't much about this kind of gravy that is versatile. Giblet gravy is more often than not an unwanted extension of the Thanksgiving turkey. The reason is up in the air, but the rumor has it that one specific organ that is found within the giblet sack takes the flavor in a nasty direction. The liver is known to have a very strong, bitter taste and smell, which can completely overpower the dish and take it into borderline inedible territory. Cauliflower since about 2019, there's been a push towards using cauliflower as an option in lieu of meat or bread. The reason being its adaptability for people with certain food sensitivities. So it isn't that surprising that variations of Thanksgiving items now include the humble cauliflower. Cauliflower, in this case, takes over for potatoes, particularly of the mashed variety. Its mild flavor isn't the worst, but its bland, soppy texture is pretty gross. Not only that, but frankly, it stinks. Cauliflower gets its stench from sulfur compounds that are released when they're heated and cooked. There isn't much you can do about the smell either. Between the dull appearance, boring color, and general smelliness, mashed cauliflower has officially sealed a spot as one of the worst Thanksgiving dishes. Ham. The main course dilemma, ham or turkey? 
It's a landslide victory for the turkey. With an estimated 280 million turkeys eaten every U.S. Thanksgiving, the big bird is the star of the meal, that's clear. It makes for great leftovers, it takes forever to make, so guests are waiting in anticipation for the big event. A turkey is the whole show. On the flip side, let's be honest, no one gives a round of applause when the ham comes out. A survey done on behalf of the Honey Baked Ham Company wanted to know the most popular Thanksgiving main course Course, and they found out the hard way. It's not ham. In fact, not a single solitary soul chose ham. So with that cleared up, a deeper dive can be done on what has people so put off by it. For some, the answer lies in the dressing for the ham. Sometimes ham comes coated in a thick maple syrup. Sometimes there's a pineapple slice or two attached. Other times it's served alongside its worst foods list mate, canned cranberry sauce. Even in a standalone sense, ham is just not as popular. The reasons could date all the way back to the ham and cheese sandwich that was stuck in paper bag lunches and sent to school with kids across the country. It's considered by some to be an inferior sandwich meat. So if it is shunned by the average grade schooler, it isn't really a surprise that it makes the list of worst Thanksgiving foods either. Stuffing Thanksgiving stuffing is diverse and can be prepared so many different ways. The one thing every stuffing has in common is stalish bread, as well as the obvious place where it gets stuffed. One of the first appearances of stuffing goes all the way back to the Roman Empire. Even back then, cookbooks contained recipes for stuffing that went with a myriad of different meats, like pigs, chickens, and even rabbits. Fast forward a bit to the Thanksgiving turkey. The flavors that appear in turkey stuffing are all over the map. Most contain herbs like rosemary or thyme, but where the idea of stuffing goes off the rails seems to be the more random items added to the mix. Some stuffing includes raisins, nuts, organ meat, and spelt, a type of whole wheat. If all of this seems like too much trouble, there are brands that can be purchased. The ones with the spicy, crunchy, dehydrated bread pellets are used by over half of Americans at Thanksgiving. We aren't talking about that type here, though. Store-bought stuffing isn't technically stuffed anywhere and tends to be cooked next to the turkey, not inside it. Instant Potato Flakes while you may not have any actual pilgrims invited to your Thanksgiving dinner, this dish offends many dinner guests. Instant potatoes have a tried-and-true ick factor that is deserving of a spot on the worst Thanksgiving dinner food list. Not only are they unauthentic, the texture and the obvious lack of effort involved in their preparation makes them an unwelcome addition. While most would prefer not to sweat over a potato masher, making sure each person at the table has a proper helping of the starchy staple, instant potato flakes are better left off the menu if you want to keep guests happy. The interest in instant potatoes is understandable. They save on a lot of physical labor and take less than a couple minutes to make. On the other hand, further inspection of instant potatoes shows an alarming backstory. Instant potatoes came to fruition because the Incas would purposely freeze some of their crops, namely their sliced potatoes. The ice would then be scraped off, the potatoes would dry, and the whole process would repeat until they were dry enough to store. This process the process would allow potatoes to last far longer than any other storage method, so they could be kept to guard against famine. A thoughtful history lesson, yes. Besides that, the convenience of the dish did not transition well onto the dinner table of the average American, wanting a more familiar, fluffy, and buttery version of the potato as a side dish. So even though it's a lot of work, stick to real spuds to make your mashed potatoes and stay far away from the instant potato flakes. Don't let this be the side dish that takes your Thanksgiving dinner down a notch. We've got more awesome videos just for you, so stay right here, take your pick, and tap or click.